So I'm going to come back into um, Inventor and uh, just uh, as a convenience here, I'll use the same drawing that we were just using. And we'll cover some additional information here. So uh, kind of the next topic is to work through some of the, the sheet formats that are available to us. So in this situation, I've got um, a series of sheet formats that I can use to quickly create uh, secondary sheets. Those are found under the drawing resources node here. And they allow me to go ahead and just quickly create um, a, a second sheet. Now, there's a bunch of sheets that are available here that are uh, set up for us that come in the template environment. But they may not meet our needs. You can see that they have a, a name associated with them that kind of leads you to believe, uh, to anticipate what you might be able to do um, or get out of these sheets. So if I were to create a secondary uh, sheet here using the B-size two views, I just simply right click and choose new sheet. It would then ask me to select the document that I wanted to use for that second sheet. In this case, I could just use the same sheet metal bracket as our example. And you'll see that that gives me a second sheet, B size, and it's got two views on it. So we can create our own um, sheet formats in this case, and we can use existing drawings to, to do that, to accomplish that. So if we find ourselves creating the same configuration of drawing views frequently, it doesn't make sense for us to start from scratch with a new drawing constantly to do that. Uh, we can just create a new uh, sheet using the sheet formats. I'll go ahead and just switch back to sheet one here and we'll delete sheet two. In this case, maybe I've, I use this configuration all the time for sheet metal component. Um, and so maybe it makes sense for me to take this particular sheet and actually use it to create a new sheet format. So I can right click on that sheet, the active sheet in the drawing view there, and choose to create a sheet format in this way. I can give it a name, right? This is a C size, so I can either follow the convention that's you know, here or come up with my own. And in this case, uh, how many views is that? I'll go ahead and just say uh, a standard sheet metal you know, with flat pattern. And as I select OK there, then you'll notice that we do, in fact, have now a new sheet format that's available to us. Now, uh, just a few things to, to know about this process. Um, there is, um, in the creation of that view, it's important to note that if I had any of the views that were off sheet even partially, they wouldn't be included when I use the sheet to create the new format. And that's just one of the, I guess, idiosyncrasies. Maybe there's a reason for it, but I'm not sure what it is. Uh, but it's one of the things that we can, uh, we need to know about, right? So if I've got a part that extends, a view that extends off the sheet, it won't be included when I create the new sheet format. So just something to be aware of. Uh, I don't know why you'd be in that situation. I did stumble across that as, as a problem uh, when we're working with a customer to build out some, some templates for these sheet formats. Um, it is documented and that's just the way it works apparently. Um, I have uh, requested uh, something be uh, done about that uh, with regards to maybe an informational message if you're trying to create a sheet format and there is a view that's off the edge of the sheet, it would at least remind you that it needs to, that it won't be included. So I suppose it might make sense if you've got some transitional views that you've got off the edge that you may not want included. So now we've created the sheet a format that we can use for uh, creating new sheets in another drawing that are similar to this one if we had another sheet metal part. Um, one of the things you might want to do is go ahead and just use that sheet, sheet format to create a new sheet. There are some idiosyncrasies here. I'll go ahead and just accept the, uh, just create a new sheet of the same uh, component again. What you'll notice is that there are some limitations here with the sheet formats in the, in the areas of additional view types. So in this case, this was my sheet metal flat pattern that was taken from the sheet metal flat pattern environment. And it's basically just given me a view of the folded part now. So that's something certainly to be aware of that um, in addition to that, the detail view that was taken from this view and the uh, reliefs and the tab that are uh, created here, 
that detail view hasn't come across either. So there are some limitations with what we can do. That would uh, also hold true for section views. And uh, if you talk about templates, they have the same limitations. So if I've created a template that has some predefined views on it, so that when I go to you know the new button here and create a file using a template, we have some of those same kind of limitations. So just things to keep in mind. This is a, a real convenience, but make sure that you're, you're applying it where it, it's suitable. And don't be surprised by those additional view types not enduring or surviving that uh, sheet format creation method. Okay, so that's a couple things just to, to be aware of. Um, the other things that um, are, are kind of related to that in a couple different ways. Um, when we have uh, a sheet, so I'm going to go ahead and just go back to our sheet one here, and I'll get rid of sheet two just for clarity. There's that detail identifier, there's the detail view, and then there's the flat pattern, the, the things I was pointing out that didn't survive the, the um, sheet format creation process. So keep those in mind. Um, one of the things that also tends to be a little bit of uh, troubling is when we do significant updates on a, on a model, especially in an assembly, a drawing of an assembly, we could end up with broken annotations. And so um, some of the things that we might want to consider here is there's that detail view. And if I were just to take this detail view, um, grab it by its center, and then pull it off the edge, you'll notice that it's refusing to move off the edge. Right? It's staying where it's been put. And that's because I've applied a, um, I fixed it down. So in this case, that view is fixed so that I'm not breaking the annotations that are here. And let me just remove or detach that view from its source. And you'll find that, see, this is the behavior that I'm trying to avoid, right? I end up with details, uh, dimensions that are added here that now are now orphaned because the geometry is no longer within the view boundary. If I were to make the, uh, that particular view boundary a little bit larger, so that those edges came back, then you'd see it would solve. It's fairly robust from that perspective. Um, if it can't find the dimensions, then we, what we'd like to do is we'd like to know that, and we'd like to have that called to our attention, which is exactly what's happening here. It's trying to attach the, the dimensions to the geometry um, after the edit to the view. It's unable to, and so it's highlighted those dimensions for us and then given us the, uh, a message here basically staying, saying that, it's unable to reattach the dimensions, and it calls out what those dimensions are. So the key thing here is to make sure that if you've got a detail view, you really want it to stay put and have it attached to the geometry that it's annotating. So that's done with just a simple right-click on the view identification circle there, choosing attach, and then identifying a location to attach it to. Now, I would prefer to attach maybe this uh, this view detail to the middle of this edge. We don't yet have that capability, so you notice I'm getting just endpoint snaps that I can use. So just select the endpoint that's you know best uh, embodies the attachment that you want to make. And once that's done, now I can, uh, as that model were to update, if it were to get longer or shorter, in this case I'll go ahead and just accomplish that. I'll right click on the view that's here, and I'll open up the model itself. And then in the modeling environment, I'll just simply make an edit to the sketch. We'll make that longer so that that annotation view will uh, move around a bit. So in this case, when I move back into the drawing, uh, by the way, navigating between the, a model and a drawing can be done pretty easily just by right-clicking up at the top of the browser here and then choosing to open drawing. If that drawing's not already open, it will be opened up and uh, placed into, the, in, into your view. So in this case, because I've attached that orientation or the, the detail view to this edge, as that feature moved out and the view grew, then that detail um, moved with it because it was attached to the geometry that's there. So having the these type of uh, supplementary or projected views respect the edits. Uh, it's a good idea to do attaching with that, uh, with that detail view in this case. The other thing that comes into play here 
is uh, and can contribute to some of those issues is the view orientation type. So if we take a look at our display options for a particular view, so I just double clicked on a view and went to display options, you'll notice that we have uh, an option for view justification. In this case, the default for Inventor is to have that view justification centered. What that means is that the view boundary will resize and then center itself which could actually lead to more broken annotations if you weren't careful. It just it forces kind of a, a justification to keep the justification centered at all times. In this case, these are projected views, so they would remain centered anyway. But that view could shift over. And if you consider the impact that that can have on an annotation that you may have placed, so for example, if I had annotated from edge to edge here and placed that dimension down, and if this view shifted, then it's possible that the, uh, the dimensions here um, could become unattached as I go back and maybe make a change to this, this edge. So we want to be careful about that. And my recommendation here is to set that to fixed. So in this case, um, you'll have the dimensions will survive updates more readily if we're using the fixed text justification as opposed to centered. So some of the things you might want to do in your template would be go ahead and make that adjustment. Um, you'll also see that we can do that in the document settings. So if I go into my drawing environment here and we go to tools and document settings, you'll see that we do have uh, a justification that we can use here as well. Um, sorry, I think it's an application options. Let's go there. So in application options, maybe my preference is to have that accomplished. So in the drawing environment, I can go ahead and I can use um, the view justification. Yeah, see the default here is centered. And we prefer to have that fixed. I've noticed that it does do a better job of uh, respecting um, and preserving those dimensions when significant edits are made to a drawing view. So if you're having those issues, uh, feel free to make that adjustments to fixed.